Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So I always like introducing uh, weird new designs and making videos on things like this. Uh, I find it very interesting. And uh, today I have something, uh, I guess you can say a kooky design coming out of BMW. And uh, it's gonna be with this uh, hub bearing now. It looks like a standard hub bearing, except uh, look at that end. It's not, it's a spline bearing. So uh, these are uh, kind of like a new thing that they're starting to use on cars. They've been around for a while, but you know, it's a newer, I guess you can say design. Uh, and uh, today we're gonna talk about it. I'm gonna show you uh, what we have and uh, kind of share my opinion and uh, go over a few things on these. So uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, as always, hit the subscribe button down below. Definitely smash the like button because it helps the channel out. With that said, let's uh, dig into this and let me show you this quirky thing. All right, let's just dig into this. So uh, this is what a wheel bearing for BMW looks like. Now this came out of an X1 all wheel drive. This is actually the rear bearing. And uh, the way these are set up are uh, pretty unique. So you got your standard wheel hub bearing. Uh, and then if you flip it around, we have something that is uh, pretty unique. And if you spin it, you can see how it all spins in there. Now these, I think they are called uh, spline face wheel bearings. Uh, the way it works is kind of unique and very interesting, but it's also very weird if you're used to the traditional uh, you know, stub shaft with spline style wheel bearing, which I definitely am more accustomed to because I don't see these very often. So this to me uh, has a couple advantages and they're not really advantages in the premise of being better for you, the consumer, more of very nice for me, the mechanic to work on. Now, the biggest uh, thing that I say that I like about this design is the fact that you don't gotta remove the axle uh, Oh, I'm sorry, you don't got to remove the wheel bearing to get the axle out. If you just unbolt uh, the axle bolt, which is uh, this concoction that'll normally sit in there like that, um, you are able to remove your axle off your vehicle without having to remove your wheel bearing or knuckle assembly. Uh, you can basically just kind of, you know, slide it by. Um, that's kind of where in my book, uh, the advantage is of using this. And uh, that's pretty much the only advantage. And that's where it kind of stops for me. Uh, I'm gonna set this here at an angle. Now, the reason why I really don't like this, and uh, I'm sure there's people that are gonna say it's a superior design, it's better now. I think BMW probably made this more compact and a little bit easier because it is on a smaller platform of car, uh, or maybe they're just trying to switch up the design. But for me, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. That's always been my motto. I like the old school style of having a shaft with splines going in, uh, being held into the bearing because a big drawback that I see on this is let's say you don't follow the kooky procedure to tighten this, or let's say this comes loose. Uh, you're axle can just pretty much release itself and then you don't have too much of anything holding this wheel bearing on except for the four bolts which they should suffice but this also does help as a, I guess you can say a sandwich it kind of helps press keep things together uh, probably takes a little load off of these bolts um, not that, that is a common thing of happening but just in my head uh, it's uh, something that could be a little bit more risky even though the potential of this happening is slim to none um, you know it, unless you just don't tighten anything or everything breaks and that's a whole different story but for me the reason why i really dislike this design is the design to me is low power and i can see this breaking very easily um, the most difficult part about installing this is making sure that these are nice and uh you know connected they're intertwined because you can actually put it you know where it's like two gears on top of each other because you can see it's like a gear spline um, and if you put a gear to gear and you bolt it up and you try to drive it you're gonna get that and you're gonna shear it off uh, you got to make sure they're intertwined kind of like this you know they're coupled together so it forms a nice unity so it's a little bit more difficult on that front a little bit more nerve-wracking especially uh, if you're doing this at home to uh, get these lined up uh, big drawback to that versus an axle with a stub shaft and splines you just you know put it on in there put the axle on and tighten it up um, but the biggest thing to me like i said is uh the power on this, um, I don't think these can hold as much power as the other ones. I could be wrong, I'm not an engineer. This is just my thoughts on this. But uh, for me, having this with, uh, you know, basically like two intertwining services like this, and they're not even deep grooves, they're like shallow grooves, kind of like this. What happens if you have a lot of power and you just, you know, shear it off? Versus having something that will go in there and spline and it actually carries the load a little bit better. So for me, that's kind of a big drawback on these, especially on these little BMWs that people want to make a ton of power on, where they just do a downpipe, a little bit of a tune, and all of a sudden the car is making like 5 million horsepower, you know, barreling down the streets somewhere. 
um, which uh, it's a little bit over exaggerated, but most BMWs is not a, a you know hidden thing where a downpipe, an exhaust system, an intake, and a tune will make plenty of power for you to go out on the street and uh, wreak a little bit of havoc. Um, this is not one of them. This is just a mom and pop, you know, grocery getter to X1, like a little platform SUV, but uh, I'm sure you can tune it up. But uh, either way, um, this is what they're designing nowadays. And, you know, I, I don't know, this is one of the first ones that I've done. I've seen these, you know, in uh, the area of automotive lately, but I've never gotten my chance to do one. Uh, it, to me, it's about the same as far as replacing them. The only thing that I really do hate is that they use stupid hardware like this, the e torx which uh, sometimes these, if you've done this long enough, know that these will rust up. You can't get the size on there and can't get them off. But aside from that, I mean, if the bolts were just standard, regular, you know, cutouts, it would be just about the same as replacing any other wheel bearing. I really didn't find it that much more difficult. Um, the hardest part, like I said, that you'll probably experience, and even for me, I just had to make sure was making sure that the splines are, you know, correct on here um, because the axle has the same type of uh, look and it's the opposite of this. And they're supposed to inter groove or interlock with each other. Um, the way I did that was just basically put the two together, uh, put my axle nut bolt through lightly tying it by hand and kind of rock the two until they made it then uh, tying it up a little bit more just hand tight and then i was wiggling my wheel bearing and just making sure that my axle would engage as soon as i touch the wheel bearing because any movement here should be moving here so your axle should be moving uh, and you know that's how i was able to lock it on uh, it wasn't horrible but like i said just a little bit more nerve-wracking especially if you're not used to it but uh for me, this design, even though uh, it's about the same, it's a nice, interesting new design. It can't really knock it too much, except for I don't think it'll hold as much power uh, as the old school style of stub shafts with splines. That's where I kind of, you know, will want to go with the more tried and true method. Um, it's just a new, interesting take. And for me, engineering in itself, this is what it's about. Make new items, try them out, see if we can make things easier to work on. And if I was a tech just replacing axles, this would be a dream because uh, like I said, you don't have to remove a wheel bearing to get the axle out or you know, possibly remove the knuckle or loosen it to get the axle out. Because normally when you have a stub shaft, you gotta pull that thing out quite a bit. Um, but that's where you know the only advantage comes into in my book. Everything else has disadvantages to it. And uh, it's nice to see a nice new fresh design, but I don't think this is it to be quite honest. Now, this is just my feeling on it. Uh, I may be wrong. This thing may be able to hold 5,000 horsepower. I don't know. Uh, but for me, just, uh, you know, if you get on in there and you look at those teeth there, they're just a little bit too shallow and not deep enough and not aggressive enough to hold a lot of power in my book. So that's, uh, my take on this. So overall, uh, I just thought this was interesting and new. There will be a video of me replacing this on a BMW. So you can see me, uh, kind of figure things out as, uh, we go from there. But, uh, other than that, I just want to share my thoughts and, uh, I would like to hear everyone chime in and, uh, see what you have to say. And if you work at BMW, please chime in on the comments below. I really want to hear you guys' take on this because you deal with these every day. I see these every now and then. This is actually my first one. Uh, so, uh, if you work at BMW or do a lot of these, let me know. How do they hold up? Are, are they better than the traditional way or are they subpar to them? Um, in the comments down below, as always, uh, just give me a shout out. Let me know. So... That's pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to cut the video here because I don't want to rant all day about this weird new design. But uh, overall, guys, uh, that's, uh, that's the cake, as they say. So as always, uh, comment, like, and subscribe because it definitely helps the channel grow. I hope everyone has a wonderful day, and I'll catch you on the next video.